All right. Good morning, Laurel Ridge Church. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. We're going to worship the Lord together today. Let's sing out. There we go. I was going to see if we can get our back screen fixed there. I have some. It's kind of like my cheat sheet. I don't have all the songs and chords memorized. Can you believe that? So I was kind of needing that. We call it the confidence monitor. And I needed a little boost of confidence on this next song. It goes like this. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. 
after you came along and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love let's sing out to the lord oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you Father, Lord, we give you great praise. We come before you today, and we're so grateful to be gathered in your midst. Lord God, we just, we praise you because you are perfect in all of your ways. And Jesus, you are mighty, you are true, you are the only one who can save. And Lord, as that last song reminds us, there is nothing that compares to you. 
there is nothing or no one like you. And for that, Jesus, we just, we just lay our lives down before you. We give you our praise. It is a, it is a joy to worship together, either online or gathered here together in this place today. Lord, we are so thankful that you are here with us in our midst. God, I pray that your spirit would move unhindered. Lord, if, if there be any barriers or obstacles that we brought in here with us today or that we're carrying with us today, Lord, I pray that those barriers and obstacles would be torn down. Lord, that your spirit may, may move freely among us and in our hearts and our lives today. God, I believe that you desire to do something important, something significant in our midst as you work in each of our lives. And Lord, may we just surrender to your will as your spirit moves. God, we want to hear from you today as we look into your word. And so Lord, we just surrender this time to you. We commit this time to you, Jesus, that you would move. And we pray these things together in the wonderful and in the powerful name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. You may be seated. So I'm so glad you're here this morning and not at home because, um, well, one, I'm glad you're here this morning, <laughs> but Comcast is down at the moment, so the folks at home aren't seeing anything. <laughs> so we're going to try to fix that too. So good morning. Thank you for coming. So glad to have folks in the house of God again. Um, and for those who are at home watching um, this afternoon after we put up the recorded version, sorry for the issues this morning. We'll work on that. Um, I'm Pastor Eric, and uh, welcome. If you have a moment this morning, I ask you to fill out a Connect card either on your phone um, or on your computer if you're at home later, um, or you can just text the word welcome to the number on the screen and fill it out there. It'll take you to the website to do that. Um, and also want to thank you for your continued faithful giving. You can do so online. It's quick, easy, and secure. You can set up automatic payments. Um, and you can also donate by texting the word give to the same number. Um, or you can just drop off. If you're here this morning, you can drop off your tithes and offerings at either exit on the back doors or to the door to your left. At the end of the service, you'll find a box there to drop those into. So um, we've been talking about several weeks, trunk or treat coming up on October 3rd. 31st, uh, 5 o'clock, um, working away at that. Thank you for everybody who's brought candy so far. Ask that folks who haven't just keep bringing that in. It's kind of a necessary ingredient to having a great trunk or treat event. Um, also, um, the other necessary ingredients, we need trunks. We've had a lot of folks sign up to bring their cars and decorate them, as, and we'll uh, be giving out prizes to the top three cars that the kids vote on. Um, but uh, you still have an opportunity to sign up for those, um, so keep signing up those. We'll make our final plans this Tuesday and send out for everybody who signed up. We'll send out the details on that. Um, and anybody realize it's almost Christmas time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it's probably a little early for most of us to shop. I do mine starting on December 21st, um, so that's when I start. But uh, for Operation Christmas Child, which is an event we do every year, um, we have to start a little bit early because those boxes need to be packaged and mailed all over the world. So to get them out there, we actually start now with handing out the boxes. So if you've participated before in Operation Christmas Child, making up a shoe box, we have those boxes in the lobby. You can pick them up today. You can pick them up for the next month on Sundays. We're also available at the office if you're watching from home. You can pick them up during our normal office hours, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 2. Um, we want to get those completed and back by November 15th. A really cool thing, if you're not in the going out and shopping right now, you're trying to limit your uh, exposure to everybody else, um, they now have where you can put your shoebox together online. You can build it. You can go to our website, lowerwoodchurch.org slash OCC. You'll see a picture there. It says build your box online. Push on that. and It'll take you to the website. You tell them what type of box you want, the child, the age, um, what do you want to put in it, and they'll build it all for you and get it shipped over for you. So a great new way to be COVID-free during these times. A um, couple more quick things. Number one is next week, well, you're at the 11 o'clock service. That's still going to be at 11 o'clock. For those who are used to coming at 9.15, we're going to move that till 9 o'clock. We're moving at 15 minutes early, so in, in between in this very room, we can sandwich a children's service at 10.10. So chairs, yay. <laughs> So if you have a kid and you want to bring them, Pastor Brian and the kids ministry staff will be up here running a children's program with the children's video, the children's music, everything they're used to having in the back, but is sitting in here with the parents and keeping the social distancing going on so we meet all the requirements of having a worship service, but a worship service that's designed for kids. So we're going to have that at 10.10 to about 10.40 and then clear out in time for 11 o'clock service. And one other thing, last week I asked for folks to pray, pray about where you might be serving God as uh, we 
call them change makers, um, as our volunteers in the church. So if you want to be a change maker in the church, we do have sign-up sheets, uh, little cards on your way out for signing up for either ushers or greeters. Um, a lot of ushers and greeters are still staying home, sheltered from the COVID, so we'd love to add some more to that staff. If there's something else that God's putting on your heart, feel free to talk to me. I'll be in the lobby on the way out. We can talk about other needs in that area. So Pastor Dan's going to be out right after this video to continue the series on emotionally healthy relationships. Y'all have a great day. All right, well, good morning. good morning. So I'm not sure if we're online. Are we online yet? No, we're not online. So you guys are it. This is it. Doesn't get any, look around, doesn't get any better than this. Woohoo! All right, so anyway, uh, first time we've had that kind of problem, so that's not good. So anyway, welcome everyone. It's great to see all of you. And so a couple real quick things as we get ready to get in today's uh, lesson. One, want to mention Friday night. Last Friday night, we had a little movie night. And so I want to thank uh, Pastor Eric Hamblin and, yep, and uh, Pastor Brian as well for helping out. And so we had a great time watching a movie out in the parking lot. So that was, that was fun. So that was a good time. And then also, too, just to mention the, the time changes, if you guys normally come to the 11 o'clock service, not a lot of big changes, but if you come to the earlier service, that's at 9, <clears throat> and then we'll have a kids program that will be around 30 minutes or so, 35 minutes long, and, so, and that's for all ages, so parents will be in here with them as well, so preschoolers are welcome. So anyway, that's good to, good to have, and we're excited about opening that up. Also, one last thing, um, you know, we have a capacity, at least at this point, of 100 people that's supposed to be on campus, and so as more and more folks, I've had a few people say, well, I don't want to take a seat from someone else, and so if, you know, is, is, is if we get 100 people, we're just going to keep having services until everyone's accommodated. So that's what we're going to do as we move forward, all right? No one's watching online to hear that, so you can go home and tell your neighbors. All right, here we go. Are you all ready? All right, so I need a little bit of enthusiasm, because remember, for the long period of time, I preached in front of Eric and Eric, and it was really down. So let's, uh, let's get going, all right? So we are in a series on emotionally healthy relationships, and so if you missed any of the last uh, couple of weeks, in week number one, we talked about five skills through the series that we're going to learn five weeks, five skills, one skill each day to take home and to apply into our relationships. And so the first one we learned was uh, clarify expectations in the relationship. That was in week one. In week two, which was last week, we talked about self-awareness. And uh, some of you had sent some emails talking about working on yourself, which I think is terrific. And today we're going to talk about one that most people do not connect with healthy relationships. And what's interesting, and you'll see why as we get through it, but you'll see that there's like a disconnect. Not only is there a disconnect in relationships, but they're not even sure of how you actually get what I'm going to talk about today. And that is the area of wisdom, all right? Wisdom. Wisdom and relationships go hand in hand. If you're going to have healthy emotional relationships, you've got to have wisdom in that relationship. Now, I said this at the very beginning of the series, and I'll say it now. This message isn't for the people who aren't here. God, in his sovereignty and love, brought you here to see my beautiful face. Isn't, aren't you lucky? So the message isn't for them, and I can't even talk to the people online. The message is for you. You can't change them. You already tried. It didn't work, all right? So we're really talking about addressing ourselves and asking ourselves, hey, do I have wisdom in my relationships, all right? So here's what James, the half-brother of Jesus, says. He says that as you walk through life, you are sowing seeds. So he's talking to a farming community. Everybody understood what it was to go out in the fields and plant seeds. They didn't have uh, the machines that we have today and tractors and so forth. And so you planted seeds one by one or you scattered them if you were doing some type of wheat and that kind of stuff, you would scatter the seeds. But every seed was basically touched by a person's hand. And that was an investment in that person. 
And James is going to talk about wisdom and relationships, all right? So I'm going to kind of change the mindset a little bit. Instead of thinking about farming, I want you to think about investing in it. They invested in a seed and they planted it. In your life and my life, we have relationships, a spouse, extended family, family members, you know, uh, co-workers and stuff. And you're investing in their life. As you walk through and walk past their life and you interact with them, you are planting or you are investing in their life. You're investing encouragement. You're investing value. You're investing harmony. You're investing anger. You're investing jealousy. You're investing bitterness in those lives, all right? And what he's going to say is, if you want to know what you're investing in those relationships, it's simple. Just simple, simply look at the fruit that those relationships are manifesting. All right. Now, again, I know the pushback. Yeah, but Pastor Dan, if you could just meet that person, you'd understand all my problems, right? I get that, but remember, they're not here. You are, all right? And so in your area of relationships, are you investing harmony or disharmony, peace or anger, right? Value or are you making a person feel insecure, what are you investing in their life? And if the answer is, well, gee, I'm not really sure, then the, then the answer is you just simply step back and take a look at it and say, okay, what is, being, what is the fruit of that relationship? Are you all with me so far? Yes? Are you all with me so far? All right. So in your outline, and we're going to go back to, let, let's do this. Let's have a little quiz, okay, because I, I got to remember how they have it set up in there. So we're going to take a test. Everyone loves a test, Right. We're going to determine what kind of a listener you are. You want to take a test? All right. And so, so I'm going to, we're going to have a, on the screen, we're going to have the question. You're going to answer simple. One is yes, zero is no. Okay. One is yes, zero is no. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. I don't want to wordsmith. I don't know where well, the comma shouldn't be there. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I'm going to read the question. You're going to answer yes, one, no, zero. All right? You can just write it on your, on your outline uh, or on your hand or whatever it is. Okay, so you're ready? And we're going to determine. And then later, you're going to get a prize based on your score. Just kidding. All right. So here we go. My close friends, are we up on the screen? Okay, there we are. Are My close friends would describe me as a responsive listener. One is yes, zero is no. Don't think about it. You know the answer. All right? Ready? Next one. Number two. When people are upset with me, I'm able to listen to them without being defensive. One is yes. Zero is no. You want me to help you out? Most of you, the answer is no. All right. Here we go. Number three. I listen not only to the words people say, but also the feelings behind their words and their body language. We're going to talk a little bit about that. One is yes. Zero is no. <clears throat> Four, I have, ver- I have little interest in judging other people or quickly, give, or, or quickly giving my opinion. One is yes, zero is no. Let me just look around. All right, the answer is no. Number five, <clears throat> I'm able to, va- uh, to validate another person's feelings with empathy. One is yes, zero is no. Number uh, six, I'm aware of my defensive mechanisms in stressful conversations, appeasing, ignoring, blaming, and distracting. One is yes, zero is no. <clears throat> I, am, uh, I am deeply aware of how the family I was raised in shaped my present listening style. One is yes, zero is no, and I don't want anybody blaming grandpa, all right? Unless grandpa's alive and I can meet him. And then I'll decide whether that's true. Number eight in your outline. I ask for clarification when listening rather than filling in the blanks or making assumptions. One is yes, zero is no. It's it's no. All right, number nine. I don't interrupt or get my point across when when someone is speaking. One is yes, zero is no. And some of you want to interrupt me right now, right? Number 10, 
I give, uh, I give people my undivided attention when they are talking to me. One is yes, zero is no. All right, now count. Now we only have to go to 10. So come on, you guys can do that. And most of you aren't anywhere close to that. All right, you get it all counted up? Okay, this is yes, that's no. So here's the answers. Let's see how well you did. If you got eight through 10, you are an outstanding listener, and I have on there digital high five, but we're not online today, but we'll give, you, we'll give an air high five. Anybody get eight to 10? One, all right, all right. I had two in the early service. I knew both of them well. It wasn't true. Okay, I had one over here, okay. So I'll, I'll, give, I'll give that to you. Seven, uh, seven or eight, um, you are a very good listener, which would make your mama proud. Four, four and five, you are a good listener, not too shabby. All right? Three to zero, you picked a great day to join us. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. Is there any three to zero people? All right, well, God bless you. You guys are going to heaven. The rest of you, not so sure. All right, because at least you're honest. <clears throat> so I got that from another guy, and so I stole it from him, but I thought it was pretty good. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about that in a moment. All right, so here we go. There's nothing more draining in, a, in life than relationships. In fact, if you were to strip away everything in your life, all the stuff that we do, the things that we go, the stuff that we buy, Really what matters is relationships. At the end of your life, the thing that most families want to do is they gather with people and they don't talk about trophies and 401ks and businesses they, they, they built and cars that they have, but they talk about relationships, right? And so if you strip everything aside, relationships is really what matters. And so when we have this bottom line of relationships, and that's really what matters, and they're rocky, for whatever reason, it creates an enormous amount of stress, and it literally just drains us in life. And so if, you're in a, if you have a relationship that's rocky with somebody that you care about, there's nothing worse in life than to have that turbulent uh, situation that, that goes on in life. And so James is going to say that as you walk through life, if you have a foundation of wisdom, and wisdom isn't smarts, it's not IQ, it's not about your degree, what seminar you went to, it's actually a gift that God gives you. That if you have wisdom, you will be able to navigate through troubled people, abusive people, difficult people, wonderful, loving people like me, all right? You'll be able to navigate through, and as a result of that, your relationships will be stable and strong, all right? And so the idea of having wisdom in our life, it's not something that we kind of think and think about in relationships, but it becomes so important for us in our life. And so we said this at the very beginning, Matthew chapter uh, 22, verse 37, <clears throat> Jesus uh, talks about uh, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then the second part of that verse, which is the struggle for all of us, and the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. So loving God with all of our heart, simple, that's not hard. He gives us his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, but loving our neighbor as ourself is difficult and yet as believers that we love God and we have to love others and spiritual maturity is connected to both of those right spiritual maturity is connected to both of those so if we just love God and we don't love other people then spiritually it's going to hinder us and so the big idea through the series is learning to love people around us nothing is more important as a Christ follower than to grow in our ability to love others all right so James chapter 3 verse 18 I alluded to it it says, peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. In other words, the relationships are powerful, they're alive, they're fun, they're exciting, it's great to be around those people. If we're peacemakers and we're sowing and we're investing in those relationships, the foundation of wisdom, and we're going to talk about what that is, then we are going to rise up a harvest of righteousness in our life. Verse 13 says this, who is wise and understanding among you? <clears throat> let him show it by his good deeds. In other words, the relationships are the bottom line. So we're going to determine whether you're a wise person, James, the half-brother of Jesus, is saying to us, based on how rich and full your relationships are. 
If you are a person who has wisdom, then you're, it is going to manifest a good life. In other words, the relationships are strong. And it goes on, and by deeds that's done in humility that comes from, and what does it come from? It comes from wisdom, all right? Are y'all with me or am I going too fast? Y'all with me? Did I lose you all? Are you guys like online? Did, did we just go out of, uh, are we, do I need to reboot? Huh? Is that what I need to do? All right, we're back online. Well, it's great to have all of you back online. You missed the best part. We gave away a boat. We paid off three people's mortgages, and we're all going to Hawaii. You missed it. Sorry. All right, just kidding. <laughs> so, so in your outline, in your outline, one of the secrets of emotionally healthy relationship is wisdom because wisdom is a lifestyle. Okay, wisdom is a lifestyle. So just think about the connections that you have in life, that if we have these, these marks of wisdom or these foundations of wisdom in our life, then we're bringing them into our life, and as a result, those relationships are going to prosper, those relationships are going to be strong, those relationships are going to be healthy emotionally, spiritually, and all, and all that kind of stuff. And so wisdom is a lifestyle. Look with me in your outline. It's not a matter of what you say with your lips but a matter of what you live with your life, all right? It's not a matter of what you say with your lips, but it's a matter of what you live with your lives. You can say all kinds of things, right? In fact, sometimes in relationships, we find that. We'll have somebody who's always talking about all the things that they're gonna change. They never make the changes, right? It becomes very frustrating, and at some point, the person's like, I'm done, Right? Well, why? Because they talked about change, but they never actually did it in their, life's, in their lifestyle. Does that make sense? And so it becomes important. So a lack of wisdom causes problems, which is in your outline, in our relationships. So it causes problems in our relationships. And so if you have relationships that have problems, then the first thing for you to do is to step back and ask, hey, do I have this foundation of wisdom in my life? Now, I get it, it could be completely the other person, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but you have to adjust and make the changes for yourself in your own life. So verse 14, so James goes on and he says this, but if you harbor bitter envy or selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. Any questions? <laughs> For where you have envy and selfish ambitions, you will find disorder, circle the word disorder, and every evil practice, right? You will have disorder and every e evil practice. So remember, as you're walking through life, you're investing in the relationships, what are you investing in those relationships? Are you investing unity or disunity? Are you investing peace or are you investing anger? Are you investing um, security or are you investing jealousy? You're investing in those relationships. Right? You may not be thinking it in those terms, but as you interact with the person, you are investing in those, and he says, if you're investing bitterness, anger, resentment, jealousy, you're a fool, right? And I don't call you a fool. James, the half brother of Jesus, calls you, calls you a fool. And I'll even take it a step further. He's inspired by God, so God's calling you a fool. So if you have a problem, take it up with him. All right, that that's really where where we're at. So it's going to cause disorder. It's in your outline. Disorder is confusion that comes from instability. All right. It's confusion that comes from instability. So just hit the pause button. As you look in the environments of your relationships, and since we're in COVID, in your social bubble, all right, is it stable or is it confusion? Because if it's confusion, the scripture says someone is investing foolish things, earthly things, unspiritual things and of the devil in that relationship. If it is stability, right? If it is stability, not perfect. If it's stability, then you're investing wisdom that comes from God. 
All right? And so you can just simply take a step back and take a look at the relationships and you ask yourself, hey, what, what's in this relationship? What does it look like? What does it look like? What does it feel like? What is it, what, what's going on in it? All right? So wisdom in your outline, and then here we go. We're going to actually get to the message. Wisdom is revealed and that is a foundation. And again, it's not about how smart you are. It's not about whether you got a college degree or a graduate degree. It's not about your IQ. It has nothing to do with any of this. It is a simply a gift that God gives you. And you ask for it, and we'll talk about that. So wisdom is revealed by, and we go through this, there are six areas of our life that wisdom is revealed by. So verse 17, he goes on in James chapter 3, verse 17, it says, but wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. All right, at first of all, it's, it is pure. And in your outline, pure means uncorrupted, pure from fault. All right, now this is an interesting part because when we think about relationships, we don't necessarily think about purity, but here's a different word, word, word in which we would use. Number one in your outline, it would be a life filled with integrity. Okay, it would be a life filled with integrity. So, so just kind of take that in for a moment. There are two key components in a healthy relationship. A relationship has to have grace, hey, I forgive you, we're good, and truth, you can't do that anymore, right? So <clears throat> you, if you have a relationship that doesn't have grace and truth in there, then it's not going to be a steady relationship or a, a stable relationship. And so if you have a person who does not have integrity, in their life, as a core value, it is going to be extremely difficult to have a healthy relationship with them, okay? Not saying it's not, it's, that it's not possible, but it's just difficult. If you have, if we're talking specifically with marriages here, if you have a relationship where there is distrust in there, that is the beginning of the end. Because once the trust is broken then all of a sudden it becomes hard to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, right? And so when we start off, he doesn't say anything about our head, but he talks about our heart, our core values in our life, that we have to be, a fo uh, we have to be people that has integrity. Your yes is your yes and your no is your no. All right, are you all with me so far? <clears throat> Verse 17 goes on. He says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. We just talked about that. Then secondly, it is then peace loving. And number two in your outline is wisdom in your life is going to show a life that loves peace. All right? A life that loves peace. Now, there are some people who love conflict. Would you agree with that? There are some people who go out of their way to find an argument. They, they hunt for an argument. It's like for them to walk in a house or, or, or office place or a break room or whatever and just have everything kind of stable. It's like they can't do that. They've got to come up with something to create some type of turbulence in their life. The scripture says they are a fool, right? A person who has wisdom loves peace. Now, the reality is, the more that you know the person or the longer you have a relationship with that person, you know exactly what to say to them to get them going. Would you agree with that? You know the, you know the areas of their life of insecurity, right? You know the areas of their life where they have maybe low self-esteem, and you know right to go. You, you can just walk in. They could have had the best day ever. Pastor Dan could have emailed them, gave them a boat, a car, sent them to Hawaii, and you could walk in, and you know exactly what word to say to get them going. You agree with that? If you love that, you are a fool, and your relationships are going to be turbulent. Now, you may not feel like they're walking on eggshells, but trust me, they're telling their friends, every time that person walks in, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells because I just don't know what's going to happen next, right? And so it becomes important that we become folks who love peace in our life. If it's the clerk at the store, the gas station, wherever it is, that we are, we are folks who love peace, right? Not to say that we're not gonna have conflict. We're gonna look at that in week five. You are gonna have conflict, but it's not somebody that goes out hunting for conflict, all right? Are y'all with me? All right, say amen to that. 
All right, you guys are fading. I don't know what's going on. Now, number, uh, letter, uh, verse 17. <clears throat> then he goes on, he says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, loving, peace-loving, and then the next part, it is considerate. And considerate in your outline means mindful of the feelings of others. All right, are we doing okay? How's your score? You doing all right? Are you three out of three yet? Maybe not so much, right? The good news is, is that you can, you can get there. So a person who has wisdom in their life is considerate, pay attention, is considerate to other people's feelings even when they are being attacked verbally by the other person. You're like, what? You mean I can't? If you're peace-loving and you're considerate of the other person, even when the barbs are being thrown, even when the bombs are being launched, you are more concerned about not the words that they are speaking, but the emotion behind the words in which, in which they're saying. All right? And so this becomes an issue in your outline, two of the most common mistakes that I make, and you don't make it, but I make it, all right, that I make in relationships. And the first one in your outline is I react to what people say and I ignore how they feel, all right? So now you guys know where to pray for me at, right? You, you, you can pray for me. And so here's what happens. <clears throat> well, let me ask you this. Have you ever said anything hurtful to somebody only to come back around and say, hey, I want to apologize, I really don't mean it? Come on, be honest. Raise your hand if you've ever said that. Yeah, all of us have said stuff like that, some more often than others. So we say things that we don't mean. Would you agree with that? Okay, we say things that we don't mean. So when you're focusing on what people are saying, the chances of being wrong is great because they may only be saying that because they're hurting. But they always feel what they feel. So even though we may say things that we don't really mean, we always feel what we feel. And so if you're looking for the words that that they're saying, he said he doesn't love me anymore. He said he's gonna, you know, whatever it is. She said fill in the blank. And you're focusing on the words and you're wordsmithing the words, you are missing the most important part of figuring out what's going on with the other person. And you are not considerate for the other person's feelings. Okay? So you need to ask yourself, why are they saying, I feel like I'm a single mom and I'm doing everything alone? Because the argument is, what do you mean? And this is the guy's argument. What do you mean? You know, I go to work and I do this and I take the kids and they fill in all the blanks, right? And I have this a thousand times in, in, in my room as I meet with them. It's like, dude, listen, that's not even what she's saying. Emotionally, there's something going on in her life where she feels like she's the lone parent. Why might that be? Yeah, but you know what? It's like, you're missing it. Right? We get into that. The, or, and it can be the other way around, you know, the, the husband to the wife. Right? Well, what do you mean? I'm, you know, I'm dick, dick the kids to this and that, the other thing, and, you know, go through all this other thing. You're, you're, you're missing it. You are wordsmithing, and you need to be stepping back going, wonder why she feels, I wonder why he feels that way. Because the answer to solving the problem is figuring that out, not the words in which they're saying. Right, And so we get into the bomb throwing, and the bomb throwing is, is that you're hurting inside and you don't know how to articulate exactly what's going on in your life, and so you just say something that's going to be hurtful to them, and so you throw the bomb. You know, My mom was right. She said, what were you thinking when you went out with her? Right, And you blow that thing up. And then she gets mad, and she doesn't know how to, how to share her feelings and what's going on, and she says, yeah, well, my dad said, and you were as bad as the last one, and, and then here comes another bomb. It's like, oh, yeah. And I should move out, right? And you just go back and forth, these bomb throwing. And everyone gets all fixated on that. And it's like you're, you're never going to get ahead in the relationship until someone steps back and looks at and says, hmm, I wonder why she feels, I wonder why he feels that way. 
What is actually going on? And so when we focus on the words, we're going to miss it. All right? The second one is, now look to your neighbor and say, that was pretty good. All right. The second one is, I invalidate any feelings that I don't feel myself. Okay? And I could just do like six weeks on each of these two statements. And and I, so when, when someone says in a relationship, I feel unloved. Okay? Now, normally what ends up happening is it becomes an argument because the other person doesn't feel that way. And so because I don't feel unloved, you don't have any right to feel unloved. And besides, I told you 32 years ago that I loved you. And when my mind changes, I'll let you know, right? And so you have that mindset that goes on. And so it becomes something where you're arguing over something that's not even there. You ever have an argument at the end of the argument? You go, hmm, I wonder what we were arguing about, right? It happens all the time. And so you have to argue facts, right? Not feelings. You have to argue facts, not feelings, right? You cannot do this. You want to know a cute joke? You ready for a cute joke? The first time it didn't go over so well because everyone's like, I can't believe it, so I'm going to switch it. This is a joke. Did I mention it's a joke? It's a joke. All right, so here we go. I'm going to change the, the role here. So a husband looks at his wife, walks out of the bathroom and says, you know, I just don't feel attractive. I don't feel handsome anymore. And she looked at him and she said, you know, I thought that the first time I met you. (laughs) Come on, that's funny. (laughs) Thanks, Jeff. All right. I said that the other thing about the the wife and the husband and I got the same response. I actually think that's pretty hilarious. (laughs) Point three, take yourself less serious. All right. Take God more serious. What number are we on? Verse uh, 17. The wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, then peace-loving, considerate, and then the the next part is submissive, all right? Submissive means uh, reasonable, willing to listen to others, all right? Willing to listen to others. This is one where you you get questions about. It's like, well, if a person shares their opinion with me and I, don't dis- and I disagree with that, how do I navigate through that? That happens quite a bit, right, in relationships. Someone will say, I think, you know, X, Y, Z, and maybe you don't think that, and so how do you navigate through that? And you simply just, you reinforce what they've said to you, you repeat back what they've said to you, and then you say, but you know, at this point, I just don't agree with whatever it is that you're going through. And so we just need to make sure that we're open. We don't have to agree with them. We don't have to change our beliefs. We don't have to change our lifestyle. We just simply need to say, hey, that, you know, I've never thought of it that way. That's an interesting thought. However, at this point in my life, I'm not really uh, in, in that place in my life. And so we just need to make sure that we're, we're listening to them, that we have an ear to them. How many of you scored less than four on your test? Can you, anybody want to admit to that? Yeah, okay, got a few people. All right, so you got to work on your listening skills when it comes to that. So the verse uh, 15 or 17 goes on, and, he, and it says that it is full of mercy and good fruit, all right? It's, it's full of mercy and good fruit. Number five in your outline, it means it is a life that does not keep score, okay? That it is a life that does not keep score. Do we have any professional scorekeepers here? With multiple pins, pencils, you got red and you got all the different colors to mark on the score sheet, right? Yes, yes, some of you guys score baseball, you know what I'm talking about. As believers in Jesus Christ, who are we to be like? It's a quick quick trick question. What are we to be like? Christ, right? So Jesus said something like this, that your sins are as far as the east is from the west, buried in the sea, and remembered no more. Just think about this. As a believer, and this is kind of a bizarre thing to think about, as a believer, your past, your current, and your future sins have been completely washed away by the blood of Christ. Okay? A mark of wisdom is not keeping score, reaching back into the archives 
pulling out all the hurts and bringing them and introducing them into the current context of the relationship. And we all know that it never solves anything. You don't pull something back from 10 years ago in the relationship and said, you did this 10 years ago, and the person go, oh, you're right, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make changes now. And life changes, it never happens. They get into, yeah, but what about you, and you remember, and I got my own file cabinet, and I got a garage, I got a five-car garage, I got lots of boxes with all kinds of things that you've done, and if you want me to go pull all that stuff out, we could do that, all right? And so keeping score is not going to make the relationship better. Here's the question that I get. The question is, well, Pastor Dan, what if it's an abusive relationship? How do, I my, how do I go through an abusive relationship in that? And that is a complicated question, and it's kind of a question about boundaries more so than it is about keeping score. Obviously, if you're being physically hurt or abusive, if somebody's being abusive to you, that is a conversation that we gotta have in making sure that everything's safe and secure with you, right? So I don't mean that we just kind of keep sweeping the stuff underneath the rug and not keeping score. We have to have grace, you're forgiven, and truth, you can't do that anymore. That dog ain't gonna hunt in our house anymore, right? So you gotta have both of those in there. So if you have a high level of dysfunction in your relationship, this is gonna be a difficult one, but it's more about boundaries to protect yourself than it is about scorekeeping. When I talk about this, I'm talking about the average kind of middle of the road relationships that we have in life. We need to make sure that we're not keeping scores. Does that make sense? If you have a, if you have a highly dysfunctional one, you can contact me. We could talk further about, about that relationship. Uh, so where, where are we at? Uh, so then verse 17 goes on and it says that it's impartial and sincere. And impartial means straightforward without hypocrisy. And so number six in your outline, it is, it is a life of authentic you're you're living an authentic life you are the real deal right you are the real deal in the greek mindset they were the ones that invented theater you think about plays and dramas and stuff the greeks actually invented that and in those days in biblical days they didn't have large casts with hundreds of people that would play different parts of it Sometimes they would have one, maybe two people that would play all the parts of all the, uh, all the scenes. And sometimes it would be a man, and sometimes it would be a woman, sometimes it would be a woman only, sometimes it would be a man only. And they would play all those roles. In those days, they weren't called uh, actors or actresses and that kind, of, they were called hypocrites. And that's where we get the word hypocrite, because they're pretenders, they pretended to be something. They came out and they were the good guy and they did all the good stuff. And then they went backstage and they changed their costume and they came out and they were the bad guy and they did all the bad stuff. And they were considered hypocrites. In our life, we take that same idea as a person who's a hypocrite is two-faced. They say one thing in front of people and they act another way when they're behind the scenes, right? And it's that kind of thinking. And so in our life, if you're gonna have healthy relationships, you can't be a pretender, you have to be authentic about who you are. So that means you're authentic about the good, the bad, and the ugly in your life, right? You have to be real with who you are, the struggles that you have, the difficulties that you have. You have to make sure that you, you have those um, uh, things that are air, aired out and people understand them, all right? So how are we doing on the wisdom marks? We doing good? Got them all nailed down? So how do I receive the wisdom then? And we'll wrap up here. So how do I receive it? James chapter one, verse five says, if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask God. So it isn't about intellect. It's not about IQ. It's not about a graduate degree. It's not about going to college. It's not about graduating from high school. We are to ask God, who generously gives without finding fault. In other words, God, who is a loving heavenly father, wants you to have wisdom in your life. Why would he want that? Because it's a lifestyle. And you're going to carry wisdom into the relationships, which is the bottom line of your life. And your life is either going to be rich or poor based on whether you're carrying wisdom into those relationships. And God desperately wants you to have those connections, right? 
He desperately wants you to have those connections. And so he wants us to have the wisdom in our life. And so he doesn't find fault. In other words, he doesn't look to you and go, are you kidding me? Do you know what you did in the last relationship? I'm not giving you wisdom. He finds no fault because he wants it to be in our life because it's something that enhances every area of our life. And so he says he gives it to it without finding fault and it will be given to you, right? In other words, it's a promise that God gives you. And so as we sit here today, if we are lacking wisdom, it's not because God hasn't offered it to us. It's because we haven't taken advantage of the wisdom that God has given us. We haven't developed spiritually. We haven't grown closer to him to be in the likeness of Christ in our life. And so we need to make sure that we're doing that. So how do we do that? In your outline, I must ask daily in my life, right? I must ask daily. You, you should be, and I heard a, a pastor one time talk about this, you should be asking for wisdom 25 to 50 times a day. And I heard that and I'm like, wow, that's pretty, pretty impressive. That challenged me. But when you're making decisions, when you're thinking about things to do, when you're entering into relationships that, uh, with a person that you kind of have that rocky relationship and you're not really sure, are you asking God for wisdom on how to navigate through that relationship? Or are you walking in in the flesh, which remember the first part of the verse? If you're walking in with the flesh, then what's going to be manifested in that? Fleshly things. Right? And then that's how we have the relationship that goes, that goes sideways. And then the next one in your outline is that I must know Jesus personally. Colossians chapter three, uh, 2, verse 2 says this. <clears throat> My purpose is that they may be encouraged in the heart and unity in love so that they may have uh, the, uh, the, rich, uh, the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely... Christ, and then verse 3, in whom are hidden all the treasures of, what's the word? Wisdom and knowledge, right? In other words, as believers, God gives us, through Christ, wisdom and knowledge. So let's just kind of step back. If James were to walk in and he were to ask you, hey, are you wise? The answer would be, I don't know, how, how am I going to tell? And he would say, hey, let's go see the folks that are closest to you. Let's see what those relationships look like. Because that's going to reveal to us whether you're wise or whether you're living like a fool. And this is the challenge when it, when, when it comes to relationships. Because at the end of the day, we all want great relationships. But wisdom is directly connected to one of the five skills that you must have to make healthy relationships. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love and your grace. Lord, thank you for this time to gather, and I know it's challenging. I know I did horrible on the, on the listening test and struggle with even the, 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 the marks of wisdom, Lord, at times where I completely fail you, and I ask you, Lord, to forgive me in those areas. Lord, restore me. Keep me, uh, keep me focused on the marks of wisdom that I need in my life. And Lord, I pray for those who are here today and those who are watching online and who are going to be watching online as well. Lord, that we would begin to have that foundation of wisdom in our life, that our relationships would be stable, would be strong, would be healthy. And Lord, that you would be honored and glorified in every area and every relationship that we have. And with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, maybe you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ or maybe you're watching online. I want to give you that opportunity to invite Jesus uh, to, into your life to be your Lord and Savior. And we go through a little ABC. A is admit that we're sinners, that we've all missed the mark. B is believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that he died on a cross, that he rose again. And C is to confess him to be your Lord and Savior. And so if you're here today or you're watching online and your desire is to invite Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, just silently say this prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, today, I admit that I'm a sinner, that I've missed the mark. And I believe that you, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of God, that you died on the cross and that you rose again. And today I confess you to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Lord, thank you for, for, for making me a brand new creation in life. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said...
Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer with us for the first time, you can grab a green bag on the way out. Also, if you're watching online, you can let us know. We'll get you some information to help you out. So my prayer is, through this series, that you will take each of these steps, and some of you have been really good with emailing me on struggles that you're having, and, and try to work through each of these steps, clarifying expectations, working on self-awareness, and today's a big one, working on wisdom. Next week, we're going to talk about, I think, one of the biggest ones that affect relationships, and that's the area of insecurity. Are you able to truly be who God has made you to be, and it's not what you think it is, it's something completely different, but it, but it will erode relationships. And then week five, we're going to talk about how to have a good fist fight. Not just kidding, how to have a fight and fight fair in it. So anyway, it's great to see you all, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Nine o'clock, children's in the middle, and then 11 o'clock. So God bless you all, and we will see you next week. God bless.